Okay, thank you, Ma. I, we heard you talk about aquatic cloth. That's of a major interest to me, Ma. What is aquatic cloth? Is it something peculiar to the aquatic people, or is it like any other fabric that people sell on the streets? So what do you mean by you produce aquatic cloth and you sell aquatic cloth? What is this aquatic cloth? As you can see me hanging one, this is aquatic cloth made by the people themselves. It is hand woven, no machine. And the women depend solely on it. Okay. And it is from here they help and t t train their children. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So this is local to the Akwete people. Does it mean that this cloth cannot be made in any other, any other part of the world or at least within Abia State? Really, it is our own handwork. It is God's gift to the people. We produce it. Any other person that is producing it in the neighboring villages are just copying, copying from us. Okay. Here is the origin of this cloth. Okay, madam, information that got to creamed Africans is that if we see this cloth being woven in another community or any other part of Nigeria, that means that it has a relationship with any of your daughters that is married to that place. Is that true? It's true. It's the women married out from here can weave. Women will marry into a quote, learn and weave it. Okay. So this is the way it has been going. Okay, ma. I... I see that there is a man within you for the cooperative reason, but the reason why I want to point out that is that creamed Africans, in course of our movements, we noticed that we didn't see any man within this cloth. Is it as a result of tradition, or is it just that the men don't really want to do it? I would like my mommy there to answer this question and help you out. Look at her. Okay. Thank you, ma. Who are you first, Ma? You have uh, to. This is Stella Stanley. Okay. It, the reason is that this is God's gift. This is naturally for Akwete women. Mm. So, what you're trying to tell us, Ma, is that this is a divine profession yes. given to the Akwete women yes. divinely by God. Yes. So, it's divine, it's ordained, right? Yes. Okay. It is given to Akwete women, even uh, from childhood, we don't learn it to show that it is God's gift. We don't learn it. Okay. Uh, uh, looking at your mother from your childhood, uh, uh, for a woman, you will not uh, fail to do it. Okay, please, if I may ask again, is it true that... Besides this being a divine gift to the Akwete women, is it true that some Akwete young ladies, even in their dream, get designs of this cloth, they wake up and they begin to put it to being and they come up? True. That is the truth in it. Akwete, at times you, we sleep, they, you can see some design from your, our uh, grandmothers or our late mothers or ancestors. When you wake up, you do exactly what you see and it becomes Akwete cloth. This is beautiful. It's becoming more interesting. It's becoming more interesting. Now, since it's a divine something given to the Akwete women, so does it mean somehow the men are not allowed? Or if they try, is there anything that is wrong with a man trying his hand in it so that it can really be commercialized? Yes. You see, right from the origin, this Akwete cloth started from a woman called Dada Wankata. And when this woman started the, this work, she used to enter inside inner room to do it. After doing it in a small size, she would come and make it to be large one, just as this is now. This is divine gift from God, and the, no man can do it right from uh, the right from our ancestors. Uh, if they see any man do it at Akwete here, yeah, something will happen to that man. Okay, it's a taboo for men to do it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Ma, this Dada Wakata. Dada Wakata. It's a woman. And she was the person God handed down this aquatic cloth to. And she now taught other women. And since then, this aquatic cloth has been 
in place. Okay, thank you, Ma. I don't know. I still have another question. I see some designs here, but I know that when we were growing up, we used to see aquatic cloth everywhere. We see people come to buy aquatic cloth and all that. Ma, please, are people, what is the patronage in this aquatic cloth? Are people still coming to buy it the way it used to be? Or is it that the patronage has reduced? What do you think is the problem? The patronage has reduced very, very much. And that is why I welcomed you people to come and help us showcase it once more. Because I know after the war, things went down. Trade went down. But again, things are coming up. And what we want our own to move up, like the others. We want our own to the trade to resume so that we can be selling and else it will it will just go extinct. Okay. I see some shoes that are made out of aquatic clothes. Yes. I see bags that are made out of aquatic clothes. Mm -hmm. So which means that there is a lot we can do with this aquatic clothes. We can I see a inner jacket. I see inner jacket, I see handbags that are made from the same cloth. So now, if the market has reduced drastically, ma, and I know that this fabric somehow used to be thicker than this, right? And now you people are making it lighter. Okay, okay. These are samples of your designs. Okay, okay. Okay. Any of our cloth has its own name. This is a Okwe Pilande Ekake. Sorry, ma, please, can you come closer to show us? We're trying to see some samples of the aquatic cloth and what they are called because we understand that you have names for this. Fancy cloth. Fancy, fancy, yes, this is fancy cloth. Okay. This is fancy block. Yes, the design. Okay, we have it covered, and this. This is some fancy block that uh, we use yeah. to mm -hmm. this. Okay. This is Okwepele and Ekake. Okwepele and the Ekake. And the Ekake. And this is the Ekake. Okay, ma. Please, from uh, a little understanding, this used to be one of the earliest designs of aquatic cloth. Yes, 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 it's true. This, this is one it's of the normal. oldest designs. Yes. Okay. Then this one is called. Um, I think Afekake. 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 Okay. Now, ma, please, one more question. From what you're saying here now, it looks like there's a relationship with the River Rhine areas of River State. True or false? Oh, we have a relationship. Most of our materials are sold there, even now. Okay. And all that. Okay. They normally come here and order. They are our good customers, even till today. Okay. They come. Okay, Ma, is there anything you people think we can do to help market this product? Is there anything you have as an idea as what has hindered the movement of this cloth to the outside world that we can help you do? to push this cloth so that people begin to realize the importance of the aquatic cloth, ma. First thing is that we have problems. The thread we use is imported. Okay. And each year they reduce the quantity and the price goes up. Yes. Now when we weave with the a cost of living now, you spend all the money on food and the thread and you make no gains. So many people are no more weaving. If you go around in a quarter now, you see many looms empty. Not many are weaving. You, you go for something to make gain. When there is no more gain, you stop. Okay, let me ask a question. So are we saying that the economic situation in the country, which is hindering importation, is also affecting your own raw materials for this product? That is, that is true. That okay, is. which means that if we get any of your sons to be involved in importation of this material that will help the people of Akwete, 
it will make a great impact on your productivity. Sure enough, that's what we want. Our children are no more doing anything. But it's from it I was trained. I went to university, but uh, it's no more helping our children. They are moving up and down, roaming everywhere, and get, getting into problems which we are not used to. We need help. Okay. Thank you. What we would do before I hand over to my CEO is, as creamed Africans, we will try to get across to some of your sons. We know them. We will get across to them and ask them which way forward. This is what we are all known for. And we must showcase it to the world. And I want to believe that as you people go back home today, you talk to your sons, talk to your daughters, that you mentioned something. If the youths are not employed, definitely those things will be. And creamed Africans is trying to make sure that people are empowered with what is in Africa for Africans. And that's why we are here. And they also, I want to ask one final question. The only man in your midst. <laughs> the only man in your Thank you. I am Mr. Echika Eruba, a native of Akwete. And of course, I happen to be the secretary helping in the uh, welfare of the society. Yeah. Okay, so at least the tradition does not forbid you to be part of their cooperative. Okay, sir. Uh, having heard us talk about our sons, sir, you will also play, are you willing to play a key role in making sure that our sons who have the world with us should look inward as per importation of the materials that they use for this weaving of this clothes, sir? Definitely. That's we can do, but we need to make contact okay. uh, to get them because um, it is not uh, done any and anyhow. Okay. We need to spot them out and um, give them directive on what to do. Okay. Sir, we are very grateful. We we'll appreciate you for being part of what is going on here. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. On that note, uh, we will want to invite our CEO the founder of Cream Africans, the man who is behind showcasing Africa to the world, Mr. Francis Okafor, to just give us a rundown of possibilities that we have ahead of us. Yes. Amen. We shall progress in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, like my able uh, uncle man has said, my name is Francis Okafor. I'm a native of Ndia uh, Otolone in Anambra State. Um, I would say that Screamed African is an, a divine inspiration and is a dream which collectively we can achieve. We felt that this clothes is related to Kinte in Ghana. South Africa has something like this too. Yorubas have what they call a shoke. Benue also have something close to this. And I begin to ask, is there a relationship between these clothes and this one? I was told, yes, there is similarity, there is closeness. In fact, at a close uh, contact with one or two persons, I was told that originally it's from this community. That those ones, maybe your daughters who we are married outside, took it to those states and eventually developed it there. And we begin to ask again, why is it not moving? Why are we not patronizing it? Because the Yorubas don't joke with their own. In recent times, too, Benways don't joke with their own. Why is our own going down? I understand there are lots of meat that surrounds the production in Akwete. Like my ma rightly said before, that men don't produce it. It's solely women affair. But we also ask, is it possible for us to also bring in maybe ladies outside, maybe those who are going to work with us, for you, them to, to, for you to teach them? Is it possible to, for we to bring outsiders to be taught how to produce these clothes? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kafo. You are welcome to Akwete in Jesus' name. 
Really, that's the myth you can talk about, about this uh, cloth. From my childhood, we were asked not to teach anybody outside here. The only people we teach is the women we marry. They learn it. If they try and they go and say they are going to weave, they've never succeeded. We don't know why they don't succeed. It's meant to be done by Akwete people. Those days, we were told that the loom does not travel any other place. You don't carry a loom to Portacot, to Lagos, to weave. That was what we were told. And all those who went after the war to weave, they're all back. And they came back with nothing. Even those who traded, they opened the weaving industry there and made looms there. There are no, nothing is happening with them. So sometimes we obey these things depending on how you got it from God. So what you get from God, you hold very tightly, very closely to yourself. As you miss it, you lose it. If we lose our quarter cloth, we don't have any other occupation. We can't farm. What if we cannot farm? We cannot trade. We are afraid to invest in money because we are afraid it will be lost. Somebody might carry it and you will come back home empty. We are all afraid of all these things, beginning from Mo. So that is why we hold it so tight. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Ma. Um, haven't heard from the chairperson. I also want to ask this question. You know that development revolves. Over time, yes, our forefathers had given us this mandate to do this. But as time progresses in life, there is need for us to allow modern, modernization to come in. You know, now you may not teach them the basic, th the, some of the b secrets. Let me use the secrets now of the trade. But don't you think that if you allow more people to come in, I don't know, because sometimes, like I'll give you an instance. In my place, there is a particular road, a major a federal road, so to speak, which before we were born used to house a deity. So as progress begins to come, people begin to, modernization begins to creep in. There was need for them to move that deity from that road so that there will be road for the children. The deity refused. The women, you know women are powerful. Yes. The women went to the king and told him, see what and what and what are we going to do? Those who are worshipping the deity went to the deity and said, whatever the name they call him, they called the name and told him, your children are grown and they want to bring modernization towards this place. They have promised to build you a zinc house which starts to move you because it's in the mud. He has, after all said and done, the, the deity accepted. They moved the deity from that place and the road passed. But the people failed to build the zinc house. You understand? They have moved this thing there for a period of time and suddenly the deity begin to worry on that road. <laughs> so they, they, they brought a very uh, big construction company to come and fix the road. After fixing the road with big gutters, just one rainfall, it washed everything away. They did the first one, the second one. Now the women, they call them Mundo Melala. Now remembered. I said, look, we promised a zinc house to this deity. And now... They have built it and the road is intact. So what am I trying to say? Back to Akwete material. Maybe there are some meats behind it. And only the women and you know, elderly ones too can possibly unravel it. Don't you think that now? Because Ashoke is, is free. I mean, you can do it anywhere. That's the one for the Yorubas. The ones for, so if you bring in more people, both outsiders, you never can tell. Our projection may take these things to UK, and the whites may be interested. And, you know, they will want to come. They will still pick your daughters to teach them. You know, I'm asking: Is it, is it not possible that the women will also look at it again? That now that it's like it's affecting us negatively too. Can't we sit again and maybe ask questions and see if these things can be unraveled? I can only tell you the little I know. Not much. That's why I said, get to mama. She's an elderly woman here. I'm still a daughter. Uh, these informations have been given to us and we have kept them. 
And after I told you, those who carried the loom to Lagos, they came back empty-handed. They may say nothing happened to them, nobody died that, but then they came back empty. We thought they would get there and then the thing would move from there. It never moved from here. The looms are now wood there. They can't come back here with them. It's a big load coming with wood. So personally, we have never asked. Even last month, the Ministry of Tourism came here and they were talking about modernizing it, putting machines and all that. He said, it is no more aquatic load. If you use machines, it will not come out as this one. <laughs> and uh, two years ago, the climate change people came and they taught us how to reduce the thread and make it lighter. This we accepted. And that is why the aquatic cloth now is light. Unless you want the brigade, like the Okraka people will pray, do their own like they want. The one I tie is quite light. Quite light because the younger women use the hair, they want something light. So we have not asked. The older they are, no, very few, very few of them are still living like this woman now. Can she weave? What can she tell you? Uh, she said, do it as that time, so that people will live. I don't want people to die, you. I don't want anybody to die, you. Do it according to the instruction we gave you. But if you can employ us, our daughters are ready to weave. Outside of Yes. Outside of Maybe okay. like before, before our looms will go again, we will now talk over it before the loom will go. Okay. Because the looms we are not talked to. You know they hear. Uh -huh. they, like, they hear. You talk to the looms. Things have ch changed. We want to move forward. Okay. We want to train our children. We want to build good roads and good uh, houses. We want to enjoy life while we are on earth. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You know such things. We, we are begging you. We want to carry you down to this town this place so that we can still come back oh, we'll come back we'll not stay there we'll come back that we we'll tell them you do the necessary thing maybe they will hear i don't know i don't know how to talk to those things so uh, because we have not seen any uh, shed where they worship worshiped their god the only thing we know is this church this big church that's where they stopped that's what we inherited. So we believe in this Chine Kakote. And we get there, we pray. We tell them things are changing. People are coming and asking us what can they do to help us so that we can be like other people. Maybe we will get a reply. And then God will do it for us because we believe in this God. Thank you. Well, I must say that it's not an easy one. Let me give you a quick rundown of creamed Africans. Actually, creamed Africans is run by a company called Cream Projects Limited and uh, it's her desire to promote African fabrics and all that is associated with African. Akwit is one of our primary uh, this is because I was discussing with the general manager of uh, Treasure FM uh, from Delta State. Mainly I mentioned Akwit, they said yes that they have it, that their own is called Uwacha, something like this in Delta State. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah that we are thinking home you know we thought that bringing this out and projecting to the world will help our children today most of our young people are losing the mark nobody the younger one I'm sure if I ask you but most of the young boys and girls young girls are not really interested in doing this thing they rather prefer to buy jeans and maybe foreign wears but something happened in, in the past I have a friend a white man from US where I do business, and uh, the daughter was supposed, was to wed, and others were giving him gifts. I don't know what to give him, so I just told him, "Let me make you African wears." He said, "Okay." I took his measurements, made African wears for him. He took it back to US for the wedding. Maybe he came in. The daughter, the, second, the first daughter, saw it and was happy. She quickly ran to Nigerian market to buy a the red buba and the top to join, accompany his father to the sister's wedding. That is to tell you that outside Nigerians, the whites appreciate what we have. But it's like we that owns it don't appreciate what we have. So the spirit needs to be revived. And that is why Crimson Africans came up with this idea, to go to the villages. We are especially Akwete. Akwete is our primary port of call. Every other one will come, but this is where we want to start. So we believe that, and I've discussed with my designers, Maybe before long, we'll make orders for the ones we will need.
And by the time we produce them, we'll still bring sample of what we have produced. It's not just a wrapper. Now it's wrapper, yes. But we want to, if we want this material to sell, you must bring in the youth. You must make what the youth will wear. It's only when you do it for the youth to wear that you are, they will appreciate it faster. And by the time you see that there is much demand for this material, the young boys, the young girls by your side will want to learn how to do it so that they can make their money too. So I want to say don't uh, relent on your efforts to keep on the culture of equity. But I must say, like I said before, the mother prayed and heaven will hear. So I still believe that if you come together among the elders, you discuss this issue on allow, see how you can move it out of Akwete too. It will spread faster. And don't forget that the name will be christened Akwete. Wherever it goes, it's still Akwete. So your name will always be there wherever these things are made. I think that's the major essence why we are here. And uh, I must say a very big thank you to the chairperson. When we came the first time, she was in a prayer section. She promised us that come back on the 14th, we usually have our meetings, we'll be able to attend to you. And I must say that we are happy that uh, we took your time and uh, I believe you are not angry with us. Uh, we know that uh, this is just the beginning of better things to come. Yes. God keeping us alive. I believe before long we will come back to make others. And then also with time we also want you to, uh, part of giving back, we want to encourage your daughters to do it because there will be patronage for them. If, if you produce and nobody buys, your spirit is dampened. But if you produce and uh, in fact as you are producing you have more than 100 buyers waiting. Your spirit is ignited and you want to produce more. That is what we want to pursue. And we believe God that we are going to arrive at that. Thank you very much.